Hello and welcome to a flat pack history of Sweden. I'm Chris and I'm Elsa and today is a very special episode of the podcast. Yes, it's our one year anniversary. I'm going to try and find some anniversary kind of sound effects to put in. <laughs> Hurrah for us! Yes, indeed. But whenever you're listening to this, and when we're recording this, is of course not the actual anniversary of the podcast. Technically, we released the first ever episode on the 19th of January 2020. So the anniversary was last Tuesday, if you're listening to this in the first week or so of the release, or on the Sunday when it comes out. Yeah, we're living in parallel universes when we uh, do podcasts. Yeah, we couldn't break our schedule of releasing on every other Sunday just to release a special sort of catch-up episode, so we've left this to the Sunday. Anyway, this is our celebratory one-year anniversary episode. We've got a little party going here, uh, we've got some cake, and we're also using our new mic stands for the first time, so... Uh, there's a bit of a party atmosphere going. I'm in a party mood, certainly. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah, and I'm also very comfortable. We've now got boom arm type mic stands, which is much more cool. I feel like I've just taken leap years into the future with this. Yeah, it's pretty futuristic. But yeah, we have got a Swedish phrase of the week to talk about before we get into the anniversary style part of the episode. We do, and it's great to hear from you listeners uh, how much you're enjoying these phrases. We know some non-Swedish speaking listeners have said that they try to incorporate them into their day-to-day -day speaking, uh, so that's very fun. Uh, we've also had Swedish speaking listeners suggest phrases. Please keep doing that. Both of these things are great to get. We love the uh, engagement. Yep, and I've loved using some of them at work. Um, I've said some of the really bizarre ones at work and Swedish people are a bit like, wow, you know that word? It's like, well, I can tell you where it came from, blah, 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 blah. So that's quite fun. But what's this week's phrase for us? This week's phrase? Well, I know this week's phrase actually because we were recommended it the other day. We were indeed recommended it. So the phrase is Det står och faller med which means it stands and falls with. Yeah, so this is a phrase where we actually have something similar in English, where we say that a project, for example, stands or falls with the participation of a person or a group, meaning that this one thing is essential to making the project or the exercise or whatever it is happen. Yeah, and the meaning is pretty much the same in Swedish, although... I have a feeling, and this is a feeling, not not something that I can back up with facts, but I have a feeling that in Swedish the phrase is more often used in the negation form, as in det står inte och faller med, or in English it does not stand and fall with, to highlight that someone or something is not necessary to do something. Yeah, that is very interesting. But quickly, before we go on to the rest of the episode, in the last couple of weeks on Twitter, we had a poll based on the shenanigans that happened during our trip to Sigtuna <laughs> when those ducks came to attack us. Um, yeah, so uh, I hope you've listened to that for the, for the context of this poll. So the poll simply asked, do ducks like podcasts? And 35 people replied. 11% of people said, yes, ducks do like podcasts. 17% of people said, no, ducks don't like podcasts. And then a huge 71%, I'm not sure what 71% of 35 is. It's probably about, I don't know. Um, Gosh, somewhere my, my middle school math teacher is crying probably about 26, right now. 26-ish <laughs> 26 people. 26, 25 people said, quack. <laughs> Yeah. Quack. Or, Which is, of course, what a duck would say if you asked them yeah, if ducks like podcasts. Maybe it's it's ducks on Twitter that that voted and said quack. Indeed. And we did have a lovely uh, picture sent to us on Twitter with uh, a duck 
listening to music uh, or probably the podcast next to our podcast logo. So thanks to R.A. Poe on Twitter for that. that <laughs> yeah, it was very, very funny. Fun. <laughs> it reminds me of the duck that we have in our bathroom, actually. Jeff the duck. Jeff the duck. I uh, should stress that he is made out of rubber. He's a rubber duck and uh, not just any rubber duck. He... Yeah, we don't, we don't keep a real duck captive in the bathroom. <laughs> My uncle had that for a week. That's a very different story that we can't go into. But based on that experience of my uncle's, I can safely say that it's not recommended to have ducks in real ducks in your bathroom. But uh, Jeff, our duck, is a rubber duck and a Roman soldier. Yeah, we got him from... Uh... What was it? St Albans in the UK? No. I think we went to the you mu saw, Roman Museum. Yeah, you I, yeah. saw him in St Albans at the yeah. museum. I then bought him and gave him to you on our first ever Christmas together, I think. Really? Or yeah. a birthday? Maybe a birthday. Yeah, it was clearly, you know, <laughs> really <laughs> we, important. We, <laughs> Chris and I don't celebrate pivotal events in our relationship. But uh, Jeff, the duck, clearly likes the podcast. He does. He does. He would hear it through the wall right now if he's listening. Um, but yeah, I think we should, should we get on with the anniversary part of the episode. So basically, we're just going to talk about a couple of the fun things we've learned over the years or over the year um, and recommend and say thank you to some other podcasts that have been helping us. Um, so there is some historical content that you're going to get today, but it's sort of a, a another mind the gap kind of episode, as well as a celebration of our great first year before we move on to a pretty much a new big period of Swedish history next. Yeah, true. So the next section of this episode, we're going to do something that I've taken the liberty of being inspired by one of my favorite podcasts, the Star Wars in Character podcast, which uh, in the last sort of 12 months, I've listened to all of their over 500 or so episodes where each episode usually take a very, very minor character from Star Wars films or books and talk about them. And it's hilarious. And so if you love Star Wars, I would definitely recommend Star Wars in Character. Um, they are excellent, but their podcast network has other shows and they have another show called The Best of Fives, where each presenter will pick five things. So top five things in Star Wars Empire Strikes Back or worst five things in The Mandalorian or something. And they would talk about that without telling each other beforehand what they've talked about. So we're going to do the best of a first year of a flat pack history of Sweden. And we're both going to pick our top five, either most fun, most interesting, most weird or just most noteworthy parts of this first year. Do you want to get us going with your number five? So my number five is the Bronze Age trade network about how Swedes sort of got all that lovely amber, um, you know, the goods and not the person, as I joked. And I know Jerry from the President's podcast uh, absolutely loved that joke. So shout out to Jerry again. Um, but... Yeah, and how this was all personified by something that wasn't actually even Swedish with the Ulaburan shipwreck down in Turkey mm -hmm. and about how, remember how that had all these crazy amounts of stuff like gold and silver and amber from Sweden and all of this amazing stuff that back in a time where we thought, okay, we lived in our hut in Sweden and the Brits lived in their huts in Britain or England or Scotland and how they were actually all interrelated and they learned so much stuff from each other and about how there was the rock carvings near Stonehenge that was the same as the rock carvings in southern Sweden and how like the trade was the real catalyst for getting these people to talk to each other and meet each other and just learn from each other which was super exciting to learn about yeah and it goes to show that we have always lived in a global world this how that global world has interacted has changed but uh, swedish history is that yeah it's not something isolated it's obviously connected uh, with things that happened elsewhere and uh, yeah I remember that was particularly noticeable in uh, that Bronze Age trade episode. So what's your number five? My number five is the first Swedish people and the fact that they chose to live in Skewanna. So the like Paleolithic people. Yeah so I mean I obviously understand that the reason for that archaeologists find the first trace 
of people living in what is today Sweden in Skåne is because it's the most southern bit and people in in general human migration in in Europe has predominantly been from the south but because I'm uh, I'm from Skåne myself and I I never miss an opportunity to be a little bit patriotic about our province I I have decided to imagine that they came to Skåne, the first people, because they instinctively knew that it was the best part. Yeah, oh, I didn't. Yeah, I, I didn't think about that at all. Actually, when I was thinking about what your five might be, so that's a very good one. Um, and it makes sense. Yeah, you know, Skåne being the closest to the south and closest to where all the other humans were coming from to begin with. So yeah, like you said, that does make sense. I liked the fact that the first Swedes were Skåningar, just like me. What do you think they would think about Skåne being part of Sweden now, not Danish? Would I, they care? I they don't probably think they even, even appreciate it. I don't think they could c even conceptualize the idea of, of nations uh, That's true. <laughs> at that time, but oh, they'd liked it. What's your number four? So number four is from one of our episodes about Viking women and basically just the whole story of Olga mm. in Kiev. Because it sort of had everything. It had like a really cool woman being super strong and taking power after her husband dies, having this long crazy regency for ages, and then how she just used these like three or four different really obvious but silly tricks to take out the enemy so carrying them in the boat and dropping them in the the ditch and murdering them then inviting them into the bathhouse and killing them there and then the whole crazy thing about the the birds and getting the bir <laughs> the birds from the town to come and then putting some fire on the birds and setting them loose so they could set their house on fire and how she became a saint and just a real foundation part of the long-term presence of the Rus and how, you know, even Ukraine and Russia and places like that trace their roots back to um, sort of her family and obviously like her, her husband and the lineage before her, but also her being this really big key point to it and about how she went to Constantinople as well. Uh, just, yeah, just everything about her story was really cool and I wasn't expecting it to happen so early in history that we would see such a really commanding and powerful woman in the story no it was one of those things that you sort of think wow this would be a good movie yeah yeah there's been so many instances where we've had very small things that would be a cool sort of like 20 minute documentary yeah. but the, her whole life is like a film and that is a feature film yeah. that that is like gladiator style mm. feature film and that was the only episode that you haven't been in so far it is, what, is, what do you mean so far <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 that is okay uh, up till now <laughs> <laughs> it's not better. I am slowly backing away now, by the way. I think either that was it. This is the only episode you've been in so far until now when I'm killing you to take over the podcast. <laughs> that was not sure how I feel about that. No, but I'm just saying we never know what might happen in the future. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I'm crying now, actually. <laughs> oh, well, tears of fear. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Die tears of fear. I am now quickly going to move on to my number four yeah. before you depose of me from the podcast completely. Uh, <laughs> it might be fitting if you're planning to kill me. Uh, it is my dog tag and the fact that no one else seemed to have one. Oh yeah, so yeah, our first ever special episode yeah. about the Swedish civilian dog tags. Yeah, that is interesting although you found your brother had one but yeah, he but exchanged <laughs> them for real ones he he had one because he was in uh, and, and still is in the actual army so yeah. i'm not so but we did a shout out in the episode uh about if if anyone else has their civilian dog tags and no one has gotten in touch and when I've i have thought there was wasn't there one person no, or one person who knew they existed but didn't have one themselves or something. Yeah, and yeah. and when it's come up in conversations with friends and family, no one seems to remember this. So I, I'm now sort of slightly worried that I'm the only one. 
Well, at least you'll be prepared. <laughs> yeah, and, and at least I'm going to start wearing them now since I'm afraid that you are going to uh, kill me to get rid of me from the podcast. Well, but, yeah. Um, and also, you are you're now know where the bomb shelter is, so you've got both forms of protection. <laughs> yeah. um, number three is one of those funny stories where when you don't know the whole story, you we like to uh, invent the gaps ourselves. So it was... <laughs> As, as the non-academic historians that we are, yeah. we just, just jokingly fill in stuff sometimes. But in, in, when people know it's a joke, um, yeah. we're not making up 99% of the story, but Never. this makes sense uh, with Grand Hammer's Man and the first murder victim in Sweden and about how we thought it might have been the work of his dentist and how it was oh, yeah. Sweden's world worst dentist. Do you remember that? I had completely <laughs> forgotten about yeah, that. Yeah, so that's the bit that I'm talking about us making it up about how, yeah, we, we imagined it could have been his dentist. Because he was his, missing teeth. Like, and half his jaw was like cut into and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and oh. so we said he probably had toothache and so that was why we said that he might have been to the sweden's <laughs> world's worst dentist at the time oh bless him go on have us man then yeah but that was also one of the first few actual people mm -hmm. we had becker schools on and then it was grand hammer's man and they were the yeah. first two actual things where you could think about okay these people actually were alive and mm -hmm. were wearing these clothes or had this yeah. injury and stuff and so that's all the whole part of like making history be real and come alive definitely uh, you got a equally funny number three or well i it... hope so because when i was thinking back on the episodes I remembered the phallic obsessions in the rock art. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's true. I think, I can't, now can't remember which episode it was, but we dedicated quite a lot of time. I think uh, it was Bronze Age culture. Yeah, to mm. rock art. And rock art is fascinating. The rock carvings in Tornum. And, Lots in Buhuslan. Yeah, on the Swedish West Coast are on the UNESCO World Heritage List. And... I think it's amazing that we have so much rock art in Scandinavia and I think we're blessed to have preserved them so well and I, th I think that's something um, really good that uh, that people do uh, to work to preserve this because it is, it is fascinating that we can uh, that we can still see them but it, it was also fascinating just how uh, many of these rock art figures essentially looked like they had three legs yeah it was either boats or giant penises yes pretty much exclusive almost exclusively <laughs> it was it, boats giant penises they drew them with massive calves yeah like Remember that? huge massive legs fascinating they must have been real leg fetish and penises <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> clearly, and that was uh, something that I thought was uh, equally fun and interesting. That's definitely a good number three. Uh, and moving on, my number two was the diplomatic mission that the Rus managed to tag along on from the Byzantine emperor mm. to the Franks in Ingelheim in 839, and about how this was when the Rus were the first documented in Western written sources, and the fact that they were clearly important enough to be along on this diplomatic mission, and just reading so much stuff about this diplomatic world uh, over a thousand years ago and about how the vikings traveling down from sweden all the way to the byzantine emperor could get involved on in all of this stuff and just the little tiny details that we learned about the swedes and vikings going east from this record from the frankish kingdoms and stuff it was really interesting i found that very fascinating yeah and i guess this was one point where Swedish history coincided with what is one of your favorite areas of history, Roman and Byzantine Empire history. Yeah, and, and it, it introduced us uh, briefly to Louis the Pious and all of this great stuff about when we, we, once we reached the point where the Vikings were going abroad and were getting noticed in the Western Christian sources, suddenly we started to get real information about Louis the Pious, Emperor Theophilus, and all the Christian missions, and the diplomats, and everybody traveling around, and it was really when we knew that they were humans, and we had the odd case study, but now it's named people 
on specific dates talking about specific things and it really like went to a new level of detail yeah my number two is sort of along those same lines of how much fun it was when we finally got written sources and like i said people from sweden started to be noticed uh, elsewhere and so my top two is Rimbert and the life of Ansgar. Yep. So if you remember, just the Ansgar episode in general, I think, was filled with lots of interesting facts. But Rimbert was his colleague who wrote the book Vita Ansgari, the life of Ansgar. And it was sort of one of the first times where we could read a contemporary source about something that happened in Sweden. But Rimbert, I remember when we read the Vita Ansgari, it was quite fun because occasionally he would just make a reference to like something something you can go and ask this person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was the first trip to Sweden, I think, where the boat capsized and they got robbed and stuff. And he was like, oh, Father Albert knows all about this great story, so I won't tell you because you could just go speak to him. <laughs> it's like, no, like, we can't. Gee, for Christ's sake, Rimbert. Literally. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's you know, over a thousand years later and I can't go and ask father or someone else that was a, was funny and frustrating and also on a funny note i loved how they were all named something burnt yeah it was just <laughs> an episode that was all they were like rim burnt gout burnt Bertie Burt. Yeah, Omer Burt. <laughs> Erin Burt was one. Yeah. Erin Burt. Yeah, I, and lots of people on Twitter and Facebook and stuff love that. Um, people yeah. still comment nowadays. It's like, is he called Burt? <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> Probably. It's just, just be our go-to uh, name. Uh, so what tops your list, Chris? So that's good timing because my number one is Anscar. <laughs> um, <laughs> I so, guessed, I yeah. guessed that. I know you love Anscar. Yeah, and just like you said, that whole, everything about it from knowing so much about this one person to a lot of it being contemporary to the crazy stuff like everybody's called Bert and yeah just how Sweden really got noticed and we've seen even in just a hundred years since then we've gone from Ansgar turning up and effectively failing twice to convert almost anybody yeah. to now there's Sigtuna being founded as sort of the main hub for everything and this is all happening, yeah, it, within around 200 years mm. or so. It's gone on this huge journey. Yeah, that was good. Again, but like with the dog tags, no one seems to remember this song about Ansgar that I sang a bit of. That's true. And no one else seemed to have any recollection of this school play that I said that I had seen uh, in middle school. So, and it might just be one of those things that have, only happened in my imagination <laughs> yeah maybe maybe um so yeah in general yeah and scar my number one so far yeah what is your top thing <laughs> my top thing in swedish history so far is all the business owning viking women oh, okay yeah all these very found it fascinating this entrepreneur seems like such a recent thing in history so i was fascinated just to see how entrepreneurial these viking women were and in the business of making sales which all these viking longboats are so famous but they wouldn't have gone anywhere if it wasn't for their sales and uh, that was an industry all just managed and ruled by women yeah and we actually saw in the life of anscar when we talked when we went back to the life of anscar in the stories of viking women episode about friedeberg and katla who yeah. lived in birka and how one of them was this entrepreneurial businesswoman whose husband had died and she had the power and presence of mind to be able to still keep hold of all her money and about how her daughter went on that pilgrimage down south into sort of 
modern day Netherlands. And yeah, about how these women were able to do so much cool stuff themselves and not just sit there, be passive, but yeah, being entrepreneurs and having huge roles in the society and doing really important jobs. So those were our top fives. That was really interesting. Yeah, it's fun how they're all different, apart from Ansgar being my top one and your your second place top story. Well, Ansgar is just too good to not make it into the list of, for both of us. Yeah, so I hope you've been playing along at home uh, and judging us for our opinions. And uh, let us know if you had something that was definitely in your top five or your top one thing that you've learned so far. Or if you think we're really overreacting and Ansgar is actually pretty boring because it's all about Christianity and, and things like that. So do let us know true uh yes please do uh, i did a bit of uh reflecting on uh, what i've learned not just about swedish history but about making a history podcast and what you've learned from this process yeah and i think that i work in the production of creative content in general that's that's what i do in my day-to-day -day working life as well but doing this podcast has been quite different and this might make me sound like I'm just drunk with power but I have been loving the fact that we have so much creative control or we have all the creative control really uh, this podcast is just very much not just it is entirely what Chris and I decide that it should be yeah, it's good. And it's obviously with feedback from the listeners, um, letting us know what's interesting and what's not and what they want to hear and interacting with people who listen to the podcast has been super fun. Yeah, I think that just that fact that there is someone that listens. Just... More than someone, <laughs> some people. <laughs> Thousands of people, actually. That just blows me away. I wouldn't say I had a pessimistic view when we started this, but I was cautious. Yeah, not because you thought we wouldn't be able to do it very well, but just because you thought who would care about Sweden. Yeah, and Sweden is a very niche interest, and uh, you know I know how difficult these these things are. So, yeah, I thought we would get the occasional listener, and then you know our friends and family would listen to support us Whereas which they, they do they, well most of them haven't <laughs> no <laughs> no <be> <laughs> there, there are a lot of our friends a lot of my friends that have specifically said that they don't listen because they think it's boring yeah. <laughs> so uh, but but we do have friends and family who listen and who support us and that that's uh that means the world to us but just the fact that you guys all all the hundreds and thousands of people that are out there listen to us it it never ceases to amaze me and to uh, yeah make me really grateful yeah i agree so what else have you learned i have learned that it's a lot of fun to work with you thank you i also agree it's fun to work with me <laughs> Yeah, you seem to think that since you're maneuvering me out of the podcast it seems hello i'm chris and that's it <laughs> there is no author I was going to say, as the listeners know, but I, maybe not all of our listeners uh, do know that Chris and I are a couple. I think it's pretty obvious. So We have moved to Sweden together <laughs> and talk about living in our flat. That would be a bit odd. Well, we could just be, be friends and, yeah. and flatmates. But no, we are good. And we do do a lot of things together, as you do with, with your partner. But doing the podcast together is a bit different and we have quite different we're both big history nerds but we have quite different interests when we when it comes to history and different ways of sort of approaching the study of history and we clash a little bit sometimes but it's sort of positive clashes we iron them out yeah, it's not like a scene from the thick of it or something where one of us is throwing the laptop through the window and it's like, I want to talk more about Ansgar or something. Not yet, <laughs> not at yet, least. No. Um, the History of Ansgar podcast coming soon. <laughs> There's the side project that you can yeah. work on, perhaps. But no, all jokes aside, it is lovely to work with you and it's been great under these very special circumstances. I mean, 2020... It's been an odd year and we have spent a lot of it 
in our two flats first the one in london and now here and having the podcast the sort of that continuous forward momentum that we need to work on that i think has been very good this year i agree anything else yeah and one final thing that i've reflected a lot on recently is it's become so clear to me that we share our lives with people in history uh, the more we started to do these on location recordings when we went out and looked at rune stones or we went to sigtuna it really brought it home to me that we walk the same ground as people did a thousand years ago and there is a direct correlation between me and people who lived like a, a very very long time ago yeah no that has been super interesting especially as you said the rune stones and seeing you know remains and i'm sure we'll see well we have seen buildings and churches and stuff in sigtuna and the main street still being the same a thousand years ago and just you know we saw people who live in sigtuna walk down the main road to get bread from the shop just like they've been doing a thousand years ago so all of that kind of thing is really interesting and tangible that we can go and see it in real life and speaking of real life and what we've discovered in this first year of podcasting, there are other podcasts out there, other podcasters, that have been incredibly supportive of us in our first year. And I like to th think of them as the fellowship of podcasters, like the fellowship of the ring. Yeah, it's a real, real community. Everybody's really great at engaging and helping and recommending sources and things on twitter mostly pretty much exclusively on twitter actually is but it's really really good and friendly group of people who do the same thing as us and make some amazing podcasts yeah and it means that we reach a wider audience uh there we've done promos on other and other podcasts and yeah just like chris is saying it's such a nice friendly group that i can't believe i haven't met these people because i feel like we've made real podcasting friends yeah because there obviously are podcasts which are made by professional production companies and you know the bbc does history podcasts and things like that but i think it's much more fun when you can engage with these people like us who are doing it in their spare time or a few of them have even been able to make it their full-time career just making podcasts and people who make great content themselves and don't have an army of researchers and people behind them but they do pretty much everything themselves or with a co-host or yeah. someone so. and that's not to say that the podcasts that are produced by no some of them are really good oh yeah and that there's a, a lot of uh, hard work behind that but you don't engage with them on twitter and stuff they're not part of that sort of community like the bbc history extra podcast isn't really the same thing and we'd like to give a special shout out to a couple of fellow podcasters that have meant something extra for us in our first year yeah, so there's obviously Presidency's podcast. Jerry is one of the nicest and amazing podcasters around. So Presidencies of the United States podcast, or just Presidency's podcast, is really amazing. Um, we're due to listen to his special episode uh, this weekend, which is going to be really good. And then there's quite a few more. There is History Hack that actually invited us on. That feels like a lifetime ago. <laughs> it does. We lived in Lon London and it was spring and we talked about Karl den Tolfte or Charles the Twelfth, as he's known in English and his shenanigans with a drunk bear or he was drunk, the bear wasn't uh, probably. No, they and fed that the bear so wine. Much... That's why they pushed it out the window. Oh yeah, true. And everything else that he <laughs> got got up to, uh, that was so much fun. History Hack does episodes on a wide range of topics and they're all really interesting, fascinating things in history. Yeah, and then the more themed podcasts, I guess, so to speak, you could... Casting Through Ancient Greece has been really good and sort of starting along with us recently. Then the Myths, Legends and Lore podcast, which is super nice and one of the nicest people ever um, out there, always sharing other podcasts and being really friendly. And there's the Assassinations podcast, which also listens to a lot. Uh, and then general 
Twitter fun and engagement from podcasts like History of Aotearoa, New Zealand, Waffles and Mario, also from New Zealand, uh, podcast on Germany and Australian histories podcast, all examples of great podcasts, but also great sort of members of this group of podcasters. Thank you so much. And there are, are many more out there, especially engaging on social media. And that means a lot to us. And then there are podcasts that I think Chris and I listened to either together or ourselves and, and still do that inspired us when we started making podcasts. I know for us two together, Rex Factor has always been a favorite podcast. Went to see them live for my birthday, which was excellent. We did, and to Talos Rankium, that works sort of along the same lines. And then the Amazing Life of Caesar podcast. And my, my reason for laughing is that Ray and Cam presents the Life of Caesar, and they can get quite worked up and quite, uh, yeah, they're very... Uh, Not safe for work. No, well. <laughs> <laughs> they're a bit well, like foul-mouthed is, I guess, the word I'm looking for. And Chris likes to listen to them when he goes to bed, and so I often fall asleep to the sound of an Australian and an American passionately talking about the lives of Caesar and and swearing a lot. To the point where it's now made its way into my subconscious and I sometimes hear their voices when I dream. Yeah, wow. That's pretty deep. Um, um, In a good way. It's, it's, it's lovely. And they're a, they're a great podcast. Uh, yeah, and then you, you've also got Ray's own World War II podcast, which is nearly 400 or so episodes in at the moment. It's much more mellow and proper hardcore history, so to speak, uh, which is amazing and then completely not related to anything to do with history the which we've mentioned already the star wars in character podcast is generally one of my most favorite podcasts uh, maybe my favorite podcast and i know i drove also quite mad listening to nearly 500 episodes pretty much since corona started so uh... <laughs> it got a bit intense especially for someone like me who isn't into star wars in in that sense just baby yoda i i i am into baby yoda i love him but in a similar kind of way that star wars is a separate interest for chris i listen to a couple of podcasts in swedish that are perhaps more my thing historia podden with uh, robin and daniel a, a history podcast presented in swedish but on a very wide range of topics then there are the podcasts that Kalle Lind makes uh, both Sned Tengt and uh... Sned Tengt <laughs> yeah you, you've heard that intro enough times haven't you yeah <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah Sned Tengt and Lela Morta that uh, Kalle Lind presents along with Frederik of Trampe so yeah, just in general, thank you to all other podcasts and in general, they're all very much recommended. Now, on a flat pack history of Sweden, you mainly hear either me or Chris speaking, or well, you, you pretty much only hear us speaking. But when we look back at this first year, it's definitely worth reminding ourselves of the other voices that you've heard on the podcast and say a huge thanks to the people who've lent their sweet, sweet voices to us. Yeah, so as we mentioned previously, we had Jerry from Presidency's podcast who read out a lovely quote for us in one of the earliest episodes. And then we had my brother take over for one episode uh, hosting when also was in Sweden and I was still back in London. So that was really fun uh, to listen to that. Yeah, Jack did an amazing job co-hosting. So amazing that I'm worried that you might uh, boot me out and get Jack on board instead. No, he definitely wouldn't be up for doing as much of the research. <laughs> <laughs> no, but all jokes aside, thank you, Jack, for stepping in there. And on that same episode are good friend Joachim supplied the Swedish phrase of the week. And we also had our friend Caroline and our friend Matt help read out longer quotes in the past as well. So thank you to everybody for helping us out with that. So yeah, I think that's kind of it for the birthday celebration. Yeah, time to get the cake out. Yep, nom nom nom. 
I think the only thing to say now really is the next four or five episodes, I guess, are going to be looking at the next hundred years of Swedish history because it's quite fragmented and there isn't really sort of a much of a linear timeline outside of who was king when. So there's lots of themes and sort of general subject matters that we're going to look at in the next few episodes and also yeah. look at some of the f more interesting kings who did more than ruled for two years and we don't know anything about them no <laughs> so we will steadily continue our our journey into the middle ages in sweden and this has been an amazing first year and i can't wait for another year and who knows many years to come Yes, and as a small reward, at the end of this episode, we're going to play the whole of the outro song rather than just the 15-second clip uh, that we normally play at the start and beginning of the episode. So if you want to listen to three minutes of vaguely Viking-sounding music, listen to the rest, of the, uh, the rest of the episode all the way to the end. But until next time, keep following us on social media. Thank you so much for listening, and happy birthday, us! Bye-bye! Yes, happy birthday. Thank you all for listening. Bye-bye.